well, well. Streaks have been broken, and her story has been made over the weekend in the UAP women's volleyball scene. Now let's find out the latest from the season 85 action as we welcome volleyball analyst Jamie LaVittoria. Glad to have you back on the show. You look very calm today. I'm just smiling. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right, she's still in today. She's, she's still there. Yeah, yeah. No, but uh, all right. So let's go straight at it because honestly, what a great set of games right. that mm -hmm. we all we all witnessed. And I think the one game that everyone's probably most surprised by is NU finally, well, not continuing their streak courtesy of an impressive win from USC. You take a look at a matchup. What stood out for you first? Well. USC defeated NU in five sets and they ended that 20 game losing streak. Mm -hmm. So what I noticed in that game, Aya Laura has helped yeah. offensively, mm -hmm. right. right? I mean Hernandez in the middle and we talk about Regina Jurado, yeah. mm -hmm. the opposite rookie. And she's playing with no fear and just the energy that she brings out the court, it's uplifting for her team and I think that's what USC needs. 18 well, points, 4 uh, attacks and 2 blocks as well as 2 aces for Regina. Yes. I mean you talked about USD last season 84, you know it was really all about Aya Lauria and you mentioned that she has helped now this season. But let's talk about the NU squad, what did they not do in that game um, giving up that one for USD? Well NU they have to understand that every team that they go up against they're gonna go mm -hmm down with the fight. Yeah. Right. Their last game was against Adamson also in five sets. Yeah. So they need to elevate their play and go back to the drawing board on what they should fix because you know their their patterns, their tendencies are now being studied by mm -hmm. the teams that want to beat them. So they have to go back, you know, they went to Japan to, you know, train before the UAP. So they have to figure out how to maximize their strengths mm -hmm. because the teams are going to go hard against them. Yeah. And speaking about Adamson, you mentioned him a while ago. We have to give them credit because they did outlast a young FEU team and it was another impressive win for it's an impressive win for them rather. And you take a look at the, their future, how they look like right now. We were talking a bit off the air. They're one of your favorites in general because of the way <laughs> that they really take on the floor and have no fear when they go up against anyone. That's right. Um, I want to talk about Trisha Tubu. Also another rookie, a lefty opposite, and she plays like a vet. I mean, I've been talking about the rookies because, yes, the future of volleyball is very bright. Right. And the confidence that she has on the court, yeah. it's, it's very rare as a rookie because when you're a rookie, you tend to make those, you know, unforced errors, those silly mistakes. Right. Mm -hmm. But when she plays, you can see that the trust that Coach Jerry has within her and also her teammates, teammates and her team is very equipped. Yeah. Mm -hmm. They have a great setter. Yeah. Romero, Santiago, Turing, they have a very solid lineup this year. I mean, a lot of people are actually saying this Adamson squad, they might be the dark horse, I mean, yeah. to, to contend Probably. this season. And why is that so? Of course, the Coach Jerry there, you yeah. kind of played against his system when you were playing um, right. for Ateneo. What makes Coach Jerry a great coach here for Adamson? Well, you know, they're learning his style mm -hmm. and being under like a new system. So, he, you can see that during games, he's very strict. Yep, yep. He doesn't talk so much. That's also because in training, you should know what you're doing. Yeah. And by the time, game time, the coach shouldn't have to say so much because mm -hmm. you already practice for the game that you're actually playing. So I think his system and the girls are meshing well together. Uh, you know, this next thing we're going to talk about, I want to ask Jex. Jex, kanino yung panalo? Ooh. Kay Angel Canino. Mm, yung panalo. Yeah, I like that. that yeah, yeah, you have to do that. I'm so happy you caught that off, by the way. Uh, Ateneo Lasal, Lasal getting the win there. Um, you know, uh, not a lot to say much about this simply because Ateneo did not look right or at least right. what we expected them to be or what we were used to them seeing. Uh, but credit to Lasal here, Angel Canino. We talk about the rookies, we talk about the new faces in general and Angels. One of the newer faces of Lasal has been doing well. That's right. I mean, it was her first ever at the Neo LaSalle game, and the nerves should be there. I mean, I could attest to that. I look yeah. back on my first at the Neo LaSalle mm -hmm. game, and the energy, and not just in the scoring department. She helps with receive and defense, and that's an all-around good open spiker. So, kudos to her and her team. And so far, this LaSalle team, 3-0, undefeated uh, this season. 
Um, we'll never know if they're gonna stay undefeated because they haven't played NU yet. I was gonna say. But what yeah. are you what are you seeing in this LaSalle squad? As I mean, in general, not just looking at Angel Canino, their super rookie. Well, you have Alba, their setter. You have Jelena De La Cruz, mm -hmm. and they are the eldest on the team. And this is the batch, the last batch of girls, because Coach Emil always wins, right? Yeah. He has a, a batch that will always win you up once. Mm -hmm. So Alba and De La Cruz are the last. Like, this is their only chance, yeah, from the group, yeah. right? So, you can see the leadership and maturity that's locked in during their games. And there are moments where, you know, after a rally, they still have that game face. You can right. tell that, you know, they're not playing games this year. They want to win. And you could see in how they're playing that they're still doing really well. All right. So, of course, the other matchup that, uh, that did happen was UP redeeming themselves uh, against uh, UE. I still feel that we need to dis need to learn more about these two teams to figure out what they are for the rest of the season. But uh, in the interest of time here, let's go on to what's going to happen on Wednesday because that's going to there are going to be a couple of games that are interesting. Adamson and UST probably Ooh, one of the, the most interesting match. most interesting matchup here. What can we expect in that one? Well, for both teams, I think they have to keep that consistency going. I mean, the tournament is very long, right? So yeah. it's not. It's not only important to start strong, but end strong, right? And, you know, you have days where you train hours and hours, so it's important that you unlearn the bad habits mm -hmm. and yeah. move on and move forward and learn. Yeah, it's right. all about learning, so, yeah. Jamie, we're not done with you yet. Yep, because oh we'll, we'll, we'll go from the co collegiate level to the pro level.